Hi, I'll continue with paragraph 93 of the chapter on fingering in box Versuch über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen. 93 of 99 paragraphs. <laughs> in den Probestücken finden sich ein paar Stellen, wo wieder die gegebene Regel in einer Einzelstimme der kleine Finger gebraucht wird an einem Orte, wo die Weite der Passage nicht mit ihm zu Ende geht. Die Abbildung beider Passagen findet sich bei Figur 64. Der erste Fall ist durch die mäßige Zeitmaster Noten zu entschuldigen. Man darf dieses Überschlagen nicht anders gebrauchen, als wenn der vierte, längere Finger über den auf einer der untersten Tasten liegenden Kleinen auf einen halben Ton ziemlich bequem durch eine kleine Wendung der Hand klettern kann. Und dieses muss nur einmal und nicht öfter hintereinander geschehen. Der andere Fall ist ein Zeichen der nötigen Zusammenziehung der Hand und wird durch die Haltung erleichtert. Außerdem aber ist diese Art von Applikatur falsch. Da die Zeitmaß des ganzen Stückes sehr geschwind ist, so mögte die Einsetzung zweier Finger auf das F fast schwerer gewesen sein als dieses Zusammenziehen. Die Hand wird bei diesem Falle gleichfalls etwas weniges nach der rechten Seite gewendet. Das Einsetzen in eben demselben Stücke auf einer kürzeren Note vor einer Manier hat nicht vermieden werden können, oder man hätte einen ungewissen Sprung wagen müssen. Wir werden dieses aus der Erklärung dieser Manier deutlicher begreifen. So here's figure 64, the, two, um, the first example. And that is taken from his sonata, one of those 18 practice pieces. And then the, the third movement of that sonata, the tempo diminuetto. And I have an interpretation of that um, linked at the, on the, you know, it's going to turn up on the end screen if you want to hear what the, what the piece sounds like. And that example, that example that he's written in, that comes from bar 19 and 20 of that piece. And that's, you know, the, you know when a section is repeated and the first time round you play bar number one and then the second time round you skip bar number one and then you play bar number two before you go into the section after that. Well, this is the bar number two um, into the middle section. So what Buck is doing there is using there is AC fingering and he's breaking that tenet or rule or principle that he talked about about the little finger being used only then when the you know when the extent of a passage ends exactly on the little finger that then you'd use the little finger so only in the ex on the extremities you'd use the little finger so he he breaks that principle and he crosses the fourth finger over the little finger onto a black key and I would say that this is another example to um, support the AC fingering claim that the fourth finger is best able to play a black key. And we've had all those instances before where Bach's instinct doesn't allow him to kind of stay trapped or by false beliefs. So he is, his instinct has, has, he knows when to disregard false beliefs by listening to his instinct. And if, and I, and I would say, if the little, or the fourth finger was not best able to play a black key, Bach's instinct would not have allowed him to go against his, you know, the principles which, he, the principle which he, 
shared about the little finger being used only then when the passage comes to an end exactly with the little finger. If the fourth finger wasn't by playing going onto that black key, if it wasn't doing a job it can do best. So and then he adds this um this fingering is is wrong and and the the uh, the moderate tempo of the piece is you know can be a sort of it makes this allowable and it can be used only once he says that but at the end of the day it works and that's why he has decided upon that even though again it breaks it betrays the false god that the little finger is only used at the very extremities of the passage and so here's the demonstration um i mean it, there's not much to play there you could listen to the whole piece if you want to hear it in context but with the Bach fingering, the only change would be that would be made for AC fingering is on the D, the second finger on the D, you'd be using the third finger on the D with the AC fingering. So that's it. Otherwise, the rest stays the same. And that A is an appoggiatura, the one before the G sharp. And the next example is from the press from Sonata to the Presto movement in G minor. And that example, that part comes from bar 22 of that piece. And if you were to think about what he says about because of the very fast tempo that it makes it more difficult to substitute the finger than to do what he does and cross over with the with the second finger you know on a on a on a surface level you could in, in interpret that that yeah you could you could deduce the actual speed of the piece from what he says there and 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 if you did, if you were to think because of the length of the note makes that substituting harder than just kind of continuing with another finger like he does, that would mean it would race along a, a, a million miles a second if that long note was so, so short as the not, not being time enough to do that. And but the fact it's a tied note, again, is extremely relevant for what's, what he's saying there, why it's harder. Because, and like he says then later on in the paragraph, there's a case, and, and this happens in bar 12 and bar 14 of the piece, where he has you substituting on an, on an F, you play the F with the thumb and then you change, you replace it with the third finger in order to have the fingers free to play the following ornament on the E flat. And so well, what Bach is saying that, you know, if he was to, let's say, land on the, with the third finger on the F in order to have the fingers available to play the following ornament, that you're talking about a, a a risky jump, and so to avoid it, that that's why Bach would say it's necessary. But what you have is a note that's even shorter in value in a very fast piece, in which that is used, and he uses it again in bar thirty and thirty-two 
on the D going to the C, he plays the D with the thumb and then he s switches it to the fourth finger in order to have the fingers available for the C and then to have the second finger available for the B flat so he doesn't use the thumb on the B flat. So he uses it on two more occasions. So anybody interpreting the because of the, the, the speed as being the reason why the substituting doesn't work in that bar 22 would be misinterpreting it because this is a much longer note it's half a bar long and then plus another quaver of of the triplet or the three note groups the first note of the three you know groups so over tw twice as long as those other notes where he does substitute the fingers so the, the, the speed is not relevant in the sense that um it might be interpreted at face value and what what is relevant here is the fact that those notes where he does substitute the fingers are not tied notes and this goes back to what i was saying about the tied note being a physical experience and when it's a physical experience it um the window you can't substitute the finger just anywhere if you do if you can it means you're not playing the tied note as a tied note and because it is a tied note the, the place is where you can actually do it basically you can only do it at the end of that bar right before the G that is where you can substitute the fingers and that's where the, the speed of the piece comes into play so given that example I would be inclined then to say or to, to you know say yeah Bach was correct when he says substitution on the tide notes is not so natural because in this, this case it's not so natural because of the length of time because of the speed of the piece but it's not because of the length of the note but it's because it's a tied note so in this case i'd be i'd be giving bach i'd be saying yeah no bach <laughs> i'd say to cooper on now i think you know bach has a point here with this one and and yeah <laughs> And in the case of those other bars where there is a substitution with the way I play it or the AC fingering, I don't substitute on the, the note. What I do is I begin the ornament with the finger I want to use. So I sort of, I do the switching at the beginning of the ornament rather than on the note itself, on the F. I, I substitute the finger at the beginning of the ornament. So that's how I did it with AC fingering and I avoided the need to substitute the fingers. And with the with um that F, that's exactly I mean it's not exactly I'll use the third finger on the G instead of the second finger, but using the AC formula the way one can use it you would do exactly that as Bach 
prescribes you even though you're using the little finger you wouldn't you it's it doesn't mean that it's the end of the phrase and that you'll cross over the third finger because the third finger crossing over onto the G it's crossing over onto a job it can do best and so again I mean Bach is he's going against the, basically this paragraph is saying rem, remember I said about the little finger well here's the exceptions to that rule and all the, those two exceptions are the exceptions that the AC fingering um, accommodates. So while Bach has to kind of be cons in, again inconsistent to what he says, the AC fingering incorporates exactly that, exact, exactly, exactly those two incidences naturally without any inconsistency. In Stücken von drei und mehreren Stimmen wo jede Stimme ihren ausdrücklichen Gesang behält, ereignen sich dann und wann Fälle, wo beide Hände abwechseln müssen, wenn die Gattung der Noten genau beobachtet werden soll, obgleich nach dem Notenpläne der Gang nur einer Hand allein zu gehören scheint. Figur 65. So here's Figure 65. And A shows how it would have I am assuming or I gather that it Bach is showing how it appears on the score. And here's B. And this is how he divided up between the hands. And so there's not much to say about this. I think everybody who's played a uh, uh, prelude and fugue by Bach will will know will have employed this mm, technique or whatever you'd call it um and in you you know often in order to play that fugue what I think is nice here is that here you see it actually sort of you know it's coming straight from the horse's mouth so here is Bach saying, yes, do this. And it's it's kind of, I don't know, for any like sort of OCD kind of tendencies, it's nice to, you know, to hear that and, and, and know, yeah, yeah, Bach has says it himself. It's not just something we do because our teacher says it or to do it or because everybody believes you know we have it from a reliable source that you do that so that's nice and so and here's the demonstration of that example and I you know the first one is with box fingering and this next one was with AC fingering and I won't bother writing down the AC fingering you could probably at this stage, you know, work it, come up with your own AC fingering for that. Endlich habe ich, um beiden Händen Gelegenheit zu geben, sich gleich zu üben, bei Figur 66 zwei Exempel aus den verführerischsten Tonarten mit einem Versetzungszeichen beigefügt. 
in welchen bei dem ersten durch lauter gehende Noten und bei dem zweiten durch eingemischte Sprünge das Untersetzen sowohl als das Überschlagen nebst dem Gebrauche des kleinen Fingers deutlich zu ersehen ist. So here's figure 66, the first example. So this is, Bach is giving us an opportunity to practice the hands together in unison. And basically in this fingering, when you see this fingering, it's, um, it's kind of incorporating everything he's talked about in the chapter. And you can see the third, and the third finger crossing over the fourth finger in the first bar. You can see that, the, like he says, that usually when that happens in the right hand, the second finger crosses over the thumb in the left hand. You can see that's happening. You can see him, Bach, keeping the thumb away from the black key. You can see the thumb being used after the black key when ascending. You can see there in bar two, and and I think in that paragraph, it's it's perhaps when he says, you know, how the little fingers are used, he might mean there the thumb and the little finger, not just the little finger per se, because it would make sense that he means the, those two little fingers on the hand, because he's there's been so much emphasis on the use of the thumb it would be weird if he didn't, you know, include that in this kind of, this example that incorporates it all, all of what he's been talking about. So yeah, you can see in bar two that the, the passage ends, it happens that it ends with the little finger. So it's only used in the extremities. Yeah, and, and again in bar three on the left hand, you can see how the, it, it, between bar three and bar four, it, it ends exactly with the little finger. So then the little finger is used. So if you look at that, you'll see it all there, what he's talking about, put into practice. And he says there, Verführerischsten <laughs> Tone Arten. That's, I, I translated it misleading. Um, and that, that, that's because there's so many possibilities. It's, you know, if you compare it to a, the, the key with, with lots of accidentals, and, and, and when you look at it from Bach's point of view, it's, foolproof where to put the thumb for example the, the fingering kind of looks after itself the number of options is is limited whereas here there is no you know alone that very first those first notes how do you finger it you, you there's there's lots of how do you decide on the fingering that like let's say Bach decided on how do you do it because there'd be more fingerings that you could use so that makes this the other meaning like translation of fefurish could be seductive and and I don't use seductive because I don't I'm not entirely convinced it's the best word for that but you know it, it does fit in a way it's seductive it can you know, it can tempt you in all different ways. So this is very difficult. Uh, 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 any key, a key with a single like G major or D minor, which the other example is in, those keys are, are yeah, they're very difficult keys to play. So this is not an easy example you know, there'll, there'll be things in it like you can see in the second bar with box fingering. With the, It begins with the second finger on the F sharp, keeping the thumb away, but what the second finger has to switch lanes right away to go from a job it can do well 
to a job it's not so good at. So it has that double negative of switching lanes and going to a job it's not so good at to, when, with the space of one note to play that A. On the left hand, at the same time, the third finger, although it has the space of two notes, it as well has to switch lanes from the F sharp to the B. And while it's going to a job it can do best, so it's not as bad, that is all. That all ma that makes this very difficult. And then you have the um, hands crossing over at different occasions. There's, it's like each hand is doing its own thing. And so if you were to learn this, if you were in your lesson, probably the thing you'd be told to do or the sensible decision you'd make yourself is what you do is you learn the right hand first or the hand separately, you learn the right hand first, get to know the fingering, learn it, get it, absorb it. Then you learn the left hand till you know that. And, and only then when you know both hands separately really well, do you try putting them together. And then you, you, you work on that. And, and a, a passage like that to practice, you could be thinking weeks and weeks of practice, maybe two weeks hands separately and then on the third week put it hands together and then after that you work on expression or the speed and you use the metronome and all those things counting out loud working the fingers all of these things in order to play it and you have to remember that fingering so it's it's not to be underestimated it's difficult And here's the AC fingering. And I've provided, I, 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 this is how I use the formula to come up with a fingering for this exercise. And because it's Bach intends it for, as an opportunity for both hands to play together, I have applied the formula with that in mind. And so what you have is, both hands are perfectly balanced throughout the entire exercise. You don't have any switching of lanes. Um, in bar three, I would say there'd be a, an interesting kind of a choice. You can see the fifth finger on the left hand on the E and then the second finger on the F sharp. And on the, in the right hand, it goes from the thumb to the fourth finger. And that this is, this caters for the best, the most comfortable way to accommodate that finger position that I've shared. And that that is why that fingering there is like that. And then in bar one, two, in bar six, <coughs> There is that element, what I, it, it's, it's kind of like um, that in the last video where we talked about, you know, using that same finger going down. And, and, and I said, when you use the fourth finger here and the second finger, it's like you're going, you're, you're, you're coming back down into it. And on bar six, you can see on the F sharp, I used the second finger before the fifth finger on the G. And then the fourth finger on the F sharp again. So that's again this coming up and, and coming back down to it. So that's where I use it in this. And so something you could try. I, I say that the fact that the fingers are, or the hands are perfectly balanced and you're using the entire hand. So this is basically setting up, this is a chance for you to experience. If you're at all curious, what does it feel like when the hands are absolutely and utterly perfectly balanced? When, when you're using the entire hand, when, 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 when you're moving in complete harmony, the two hands are moving in complete harmony with each other. 
what does that feel like? This is an opportunity to experience that. And I'd say if you really want to experiment and really want to discover, realize what it is, is, is it, I, what it is I'm presenting, you could try learning that first example with box fingering and, and maybe give it a week and see how far you get doing the right hand, left hand practice and then putting the hands together, just see how, how it works out, what your impression of in terms of the difficulty of it is. And then I would say in the next week you could try the AC fingering. And I would say using the hand finger position that I've shared and not forcing anything, allowing what you are doing with the finger position with this AC fingering is you are channeling nature you are becoming a conduit through which nature flows. And so you cannot impose your own, you know, intellectual ideas or misconceptions onto nature. You have to let, let that nature channel through you. So you have to um, be relaxed and let it happen and not be imposing your own expectations or what you, how you think it should be working onto it. But if you try that for a week, see how, how far you get. And I would say with the AC fingering and that finger position, you can immediately begin by playing hands together. You don't need to play hands separately. And just see what your experience, first of all, what your progress is like after that week. And then what's your experience in terms of how difficult it is to play or how pleasurable it feels to play it as compared to how pleasurable it feels feels to play box fingering. And so here's, I'll just, I'm not, I'm not um, gonna try, it's too difficult for me, honestly, box fingering, so. And I'm, after, after I'm finished this kind of course on fingering, I'm not going to be using normal fingering ever again. So this is my, I think the last video was my, it was my last, or this video, the examples, they were my last foray into normal fingering. So, so it's over for me. So I'll just play the AC fingering. Show you what it's like. So given that, you know, we're at an end nearly of the fingering, this is this next example in D minor is the last example that Bach provides on the subject of fingering. I thought I'd, you know, during the week I looked at the, I just took some bars and I did what I had done when, when I introduced AC fingering and, and used the revolutionary etude to compare and I just I counted the number of times I just took bars at random and I counted the number of times each finger was used in a bar and then I just looked to see how it bounces up and every every bar I, you know I did that but I didn't take note what bar I looked at so I don't so I did it again and I thought I'd just include it now just to kind of goes full circle and it goes back to what I did at the very beginning. And so I looked at, in this G major exercise, I looked at bar two. And so with the AC fingering, I used the thumb in the right hand. I used the thumb twice, the second finger twice, the third finger four times, the fourth finger zero times and the fifth finger three times. And on the left hand, I used the thumb three times, the second finger zero times, the third finger four times, the fourth finger two times, and the fifth finger twice. So, 
and that same bar with box fingering. The thumb in the right hand, the thumb was used twice, the second finger is used four times, the third finger is used twice, the fourth finger is used twice, and the fifth finger is used once. And in the left hand, the thumb is used three times, the second finger is used four times, the third finger is used four times, the fourth finger is used zero times, and the fifth finger is used zero times. And so the pivot being the third finger, I, I, I added up how many times the fingers left and right of the pivot are used in that bar. And, and then added up how many times the pivots were used. So with the AC fingering, the number was seven, and then the pivot was used eight times, and then the other two, the fourth and fifth finger, were used seven times. Whereas with box, when I added it up, the first fingers were used 13 times, the pivots used six times, and the fourth and fifth finger were used three times. So it's seven, eight, six compared to 13, six, three. So you can see the AC fingering is perfectly balanced. And then I looked at bar five. And so you can see there the numbers. The, the, again, I counted the amount of times the fingers where each finger was used. So for the right hand, it was two, two, four, zero, three. And for the left hand, it was three, zero, four, two, two. And for that same bar with box fingering, it was two, four, two, two, one and three, four, four, zero, zero. So it was the same as the, that bar two. And so what you get with the AC fingering when you add them up is seven, eight, seven. And I added up the left and right hand because it's, it, 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 it is a, it is four to two hands together. So that's why I added the right and left hand numbers up to come up with that number. And box again, it was 13, six, three. And then I looked at the first bar. Again, I just picked bars at random. And so with the fingers, the thumb I used four times and the right hand, then second finger zero times, third finger four, fourth zero and fifth finger three times. And in the left hand, it was three, zero, four, zero, four. And then with Bach, box fingering for the same bar, bar one, you use, it was three, 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 two, zero for the right hand and for the left hand, four, four, two, one, zero. So add them up with the AC fingering, you get seven, eight, seven. And with box fingering, you get 14, five and three. So AC fingering balances perfectly. So I would say, what does that mean? What is the significance of those numbers? And you could ask somebody, an expert or something, you know, AC fingering. These are the numbers it comes up with compared to the numbers box fingering comes up to it. What does that mean? And they might say it means nothing. But, um, you know, you can think it's a coincidence or not. I say it's because the AC fingering is the actual solution, the fingering that this, you know, that's what it is. And that perfect balance, if they say, those numbers mean nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Well, I can say one thing it means is that the, the notes are more evenly distributed among the fingers with the AC fingering than they are with box fingering. You can see with the 13, six and three or 14, five and three, it's very lopsided. There are fingers, it's not evenly, the tasks are not evenly distributed among the the keys. So, and, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and there was other ways I can look at it. Like, you know, like I looked at the revolutionary etude and like how the entire hand is employed, the alternating of 
the fingers, you know, fingers that have to switch lanes and and you will see if you try that yourself, you will see how the order, the, 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 the perfect ordering of the fingers affects your experience of playing that and, and, and your mind and that it's not a, a, a chaos or a mess of juggling two hands that are going off in completely different directions. And they're going like this, whereas with the AC fingering, the hands are perfectly synchronized. So that should be, you know, that should, hopefully, it makes you cur curious. And here is, you know, you can see, I'll just play it slower and you can see the effect of, you know, how the entire hand coming into play, how it can, how, how, how it can um, influence the experience. Here's this last example in D minor that Bach provides as an opportunity for the hands to, to practice the hands together. And yeah, again, it's a seductive or a misleading key with one, with one flat, with one accidental. I mean, and the, there's two here in the D minor, but one one official one, the B flat, and you know, so it's not easy. And this as well. If if I didn't have AC fingering, if I had a, if I would have been doing this chapter with AC fingering, and I, and I've committed myself to playing the examples. I would have been really under pressure for this one because this is difficult. And this was as well in that week, you could as well try this because it is not easy to play it with normal fingering. And so this especially, you'd have to learn it hands separately, try and get to know it, eventually put the hands together, go through the whole rigmarole. <laughs> and hope you can play it. And I think if I didn't have AC fingering, I would have been really stressed because I would have had to come up with a workable version for this video. And it would have been horrible. But with AC fingering, it's like, instead of it being something horrible that Bach does to me, <laughs> it's, it's like a present he's He's giving me it's he's given me a reward for for going through that that chapter and, and and going through the scales and all those things and at the end of it here is your a reward and this is a, a great it's a great warm-up exercise it's it's bursting with music if somebody says play a little Bach a bit of Bach if you have that to, to whip out, it's brilliant. Short, sweet, and um, full, as full as can be. And yeah, so if you look, you can look at that and you can see all those things we've been, that box has been talking about and w that um, we've been going through. The use of the thumb, the, you know, the, the thumb following the fourth finger in leaps or the second finger following the fifth finger. You know, you can see a lot of that, how, how all that is employed. 
you can probably from what I've from what you know about AC fingering and all you could probably go through that and you could you could spot the places that will be difficult why they're difficult um, and you could try that you could see how successful you are what's your impression of it when you try learning that playing through that with AC or with normal fingering you might agree with me when I say it's extremely difficult it takes a lot of learning a lot of like getting it clear in your head so and here's the AC fingering and again because the two hands are playing together in unison I've this used the formula with that in mind so what you have here again are the two hands perfectly balanced and so that will affect you know when you play this with the AC fingering with the finger position that I provided it's like the, the, the hands are so perfectly coordinated together it's it's like you are experiencing stereo sound when when you hear that yourself you you will um you are hearing true stereo sound coming at you and and as well if you feel the vibrations on the piano you are feeling them you you are feeling something happening there and so this is this exercise is i see it as you know like a sort of a a reward Bach is giving to me for you know it's a great piece of music wonderful warm-up exercise like that this would be I don't have warm-up exercises but if I did have one this might be the one and I would say if the idea of just a curiosity what does what's it like to play music when your hands are perfectly balanced what's that like what does that feel like here is your chance to experience it here's your chance to experiencing experience something so difficult on a different level and you could almost say you can you could i i everything is in place the finger position the fingering i mean practically everything there's 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 other elements that um you know for the complete picture but for all intents and purposes it's all there so you are going to be able to tap into nature with what i've provided so in a way i mean i don't want to sound big-headed or whatever but this is my present to you normally if i was a performer if i was if my existence the, the, was was dependent on me being better than you there is no way i'd be telling you any of this because this makes me better this and it's going to make you better when when you know that and and somebody who doesn't know that tries to play that they'll they'll do terribly at it it'll be really difficult and you will go in there and you're you're gonna you can play this you won't experience tension in any way and and with the normal fingering let's say you did that you tried that practicing it for a week the difficulty will be being disciplined thinking right no i better i better set 20 minutes at the beginning of my practice session for this and i'll do it disciplined and you know and, and you'll stick to that because you want to be a disciplined person and sticking to that will can be difficult especially if you haven't got that kind of in you you know that you've been con you know like gotten yourself to be able to stick to a regime or a routine and 
and gotten that work ethic built up, that'll be difficult. And I'd say when you try it the week with the AC fingering, the difficulty, the, the difficulty will be stopping playing it because you're not gonna wanna move on. You'll enjoy playing it so much that you're not gonna wanna stop and you'll think, okay, I'll, I'll give it 10 minutes before I do the rest of my practice. And then 10 minutes will go and it'll be like when you're playing solitaire when you have something else to do. You think I'll, I'll just play one more game and then I'll stop and, or you know, any of these sorts of games. If, <laughs> and it'll be like that. I'll just play it through once more and then I'll stop. And that'll be the difficulty. So here's that example with the AC fingering. I'm not gonna attempt box fingering. It's just too difficult for me. Here's the AC fingering. The hand's perfectly balanced and yeah and it it's I think it's it's just a great sounds great the, the writing you know box writing and, and it's just honestly when I see the AC fingering there and, and I see it like, you know, like maybe a mathematician. I don't know anything about mathematicians, but if they admire an, an equation or something that's worked out, the beauty of it, I'm probably admiring the AC fingering in exactly the same way. To me, it's an indication of, you know, it's, it's, it's nature talking. And, and the AC fingering, I didn't, you know, I didn't say I like this. Therefore, this is my fingering. With the right answer, you don't get to choose what the right answer is. The fact that it's the right answer is your decision. I mean, I can't, I couldn't, you know, if I was on this, on YouTube saying that the sun doesn't revolve around the earth. It's the earth that revolves, revolves around the sun. I'm not, wouldn't be saying it because I prefer it that way. I'm saying it because I have no choice but to say that when that is the right answer. And so I have no choice with the AC fingering because it's the right answer. But when I see that, I to me, it's like a, it's almost like a, like art seeing just the, you know, it's, it's, it's tapping into nature. So that should be some incentive, hopefully, to try it, really give it a go. And you'll see that this is, this is not, this is something different. This is, this is a discovery that is going to have its place as the correct answer, as the solution to fingering. And so just to finish it off, you know, come full circle, I, I just, again, I took bars at random and I took bar one and with the AC fingering 
I used the thumb four times in bar one, the second finger once, the third finger six times, the fourth finger once and the fifth finger four times. And on the left hand I used the thumb four times, the second finger once, the third finger six times, the fourth finger once and the fifth finger four times. And Bach in the same bar he used in the right hand the thumb four times, the second finger six times, the third finger three times, the fourth finger twice and the fifth finger once. <laughs> And in the left hand, he uses the thumb three times, second finger five times, the third finger four times, the fourth finger four times, and the fifth finger zero times. So when you add those up with the AC fingering, you get 10, 12, 10. And with Bach, you get 18, seven, and seven. And so in bar two, no, the next bar I took at random was bar three. And so the thumb, the second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger were used five, one, four, one, and five times respectively. And in the left hand, five, one, four, one, and five. And with Bach, the thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, and fifth finger were used three, three, five, two, three times respectively. And in the left hand, five four five one one and so when you add them up the ac fingering is 12 8 12 and with bach it's 15 10 7. so again with ac fingering the numbers balance perfectly whereas box numbers don't balance and then in bar seven i looked at that once more just one last bar with AC fingering, the numbers were five, two, two, five, two for the right hand and for the left hand, two, five, two, two, three. And with Bach, the numbers were five, six, three, two, zero and six, six, two, one, one for the left hand. And so you add them up, left of the pivot, 14, the pivot was used, pivots were used four times and then right at the pivot 14 times and with Bach left of the pivot 23 times the pivot was used five times and right at the pivot those fingers were used four times so 14 4 14 as opposed to 23 5 4 so in every single bar I picked the AC fingering balanced According to these numbers balanced perfectly. None of box fingerings balanced. And in those other bars that I, I picked at randomly day as well, all I, I I didn't note what bars I had actually looked at, so I had to take new bars to look. But they all balanced perfectly. So again, the question would be: what does that mean? Is that a coincidence? Did I design it so that um, I could do that? I picked a fingering that made me be able to have every single bar balance perfectly. That sounds to me like a, a lot of work. I wouldn't be, not, not, not work I'd be keen on doing. So that's the AC fingering. It's, uh, you know, you can, you can ask somebody, ask somebody who you feel knows that you might get, get enlightened from. Ask them, what, what does that mean? How come it's like that? What's happening there? What is it? Is there, is that, is that something? So, yeah, well, that's, I think that's, that's everything. It's, um, you know, I'm really, 
Now you can see, you can see the quality of Bach, you know, what he provides. And that's another thing with the AC fingering. You can, you can recognize these gems, these wonderful things. You don't, you're not reliant on somebody telling you it's good or, you know, you can sit down and you can discover the, 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 the what's wonderful about a piece of music or the notes on a page, what's wonderful about them immediately. And you don't need, you can be the first person to recognize the qualities of what it is on the page. And, and you're not limited to those pieces that have been kind of paved the way for you. You can, you can explore any track. And if you look at the, with the formula, with the AC formula, that is something that will be with you always. It's a guiding light. And it doesn't matter if, 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 any, if somebody throws you just notes at random that nobody has ever seen before, with the AC fingering, you will be able to come up with the best fingering possible. You don't need to know any specific examples. And, and that, that'll always be with you, always be able to, you know, be a guiding light. And you, so it means you'll never have the fear of what if it's not on my shopping list, because your shopping list with the AC fingering, with insight, your shopping list becomes infinite. It doesn't matter what situation it is, you will come up with the answer, with the correct answer for it. Because you have that, you know how it works. So this is like my kind of, I've put it forward to, you know, presented it now. And the next video is the last few chapters or paragraphs of this chapter and then we're finished. And so Bach will be tying up some loose ends. And so this is the kind of the, the last, I won't be talking about fingering anymore but for the, probably the most part, you know, and it might be hard to believe, but, <laughs> It's not, you know, even though I've come up with the AC fingering, it's not entirely the most interesting subject in the world, but it is, it is vital. But thanks to Bach, what we get here is maybe one of the most comprehensive courses on fingering you could, you'll find anywhere. And there is certainly, since the information that I have, that has come from me, that has all been, I am not repeating any of it. It, it is all, inf all the insights are insights I discovered myself alone without the help of anybody. So it's brand new, it's original information you're getting. So in that sense, this course in fingering, which I owe, you know, which I have to thank Bach for making it so comprehensive it is providing information that you won't hear anywhere else from anybody else, unless they have discovered it themselves. But if they are talking are reliant on what they know, what they have been told, you're not gonna hear it. So yeah, I hope I'll be delighted if you are curious if you do try it for yourself because the right answer is going to empower you. It's gonna make you, I, you know, I said the, that finger position, I called it on the thumbnail, the E equals MC squared of piano playing. But in a sense, the AC fingering, you could argue is the E equals MC squared of well, at least fingering. It is that, and I mean, I just, I'll be happy if it's examined. I'll be happy if somebody tries to destroy it, to tear it limb from limb, because it doesn't matter what angle 
you try and approach it, you know, how you attack it, it will be impervious to the attacks because it is the truth and it is the correct answer. And, and that's bigger than me. I mean, I'm just, you know, I didn't invent it, I discovered it. It's like Columbus discovering America. He didn't, it's not his America. He just discovered it and he put his flag in it and said, I have discovered this. Nobody saw it before, but I have discovered it. But it, the benefit is for everybody. And there's, there's no difference. The benefit I experience from AC fingering will, will be the exact same as the benefit you will experience. And the fact that you'd have to, you know, maybe hide it from uh, the establishment or mainstream education or whatever you'd call it or that it'd be frowned upon, that is, that is down to the shortcomings, the deficiencies of the establishment and mainstream media. It's like if you heard, you know, what Copernicus was saying, you could not write that in a, in a physics exam or a, a, at the time, you wouldn't be able to, you'd get wrong marks because they are still in, in ignorance. And it's like there was in skiing, there was a skier, you know, in ski jumping. The way they ski jump is the, 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 there's a V formation with the skis as they jump. Before everybody had the skis parallel when they ski jumped and one guy came along with that V formation. And now everybody does it. He revolutionized ski jumping. But you know what happened at the time when he first introduced it? When, when, they, when the judges, you know, they, they judge form and, 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 and the, the jump itself. For his form, he got, he didn't get any, you know, the judges gave him no marks or, or low marks for that because he used this V formation, because he was advanced. And he wasn't, the judges didn't, you know, you think the experts would go, wow, this is even better. No, they don't know. It's, it's like the food critic who only, you know, uh, likes food that tastes the way his mother would make it. They did not know. So instead of giving it the full marks for, you know, being above and beyond, it failed because it wasn't what they recognized and they, and the, their expertise, they're, they're educated fools. That's what they are. They do not, they have a shopping list. Their shopping list is longer than your shopping list. That's what makes them educated. But they're, they're extremely absent when it comes to insight or wisdom. They, they possess none of it. So I'll leave it at that for this video. And, and I just want to say thanks to those of you who've been watching. Um, makes me, makes me happy. And yeah, there'll be one more video and then it'll be on to the what Bach has to say about ornamentation, which will be very enlightening, I think, and worth, worth listening to. So thanks for watching. Bye.